Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Good afternoon, fabulous Cube community, and welcome back to Amsterdam. We are at KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU, and it has been a jam-packed week. We've got over 10,000 attendees cruising around. There's 190 projects we've been talking about. There's startups to my right, there's cool companies to my left, and most importantly, John Furrier and I have some very fabulous guests. Rishi and Johnny, welcome to the show. You guys look great for day three. Johnny, how are you holding up? Doing good, a lot of conversations, but all good ones. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great, that's good. Apparently I've had a few conversations. Richie, how are you holding up? Amazing show for us, uh, as I was telling that, uh, for us, uh, it's not the issue of a pipeline, but of the wait list, right? So, signed up a lot of, lot of customers here, right? So Good, all right. Uh, we well, well, how are you holding up? You're sounding like, uh, this is our last interview. Uh, this, I, I, it makes me a little sad, a little happy. Yeah. I think my vocal cords have maybe had their <laughs> moment, but, but uh, enthusiastically and intellectually, I feel great. It's been so fun. Really been getting a lot of energy off of our great guests, as well as the show floor. It's been, it's been lovely. I mean, and our team, shout out to yeah. the team. Great, this is a great way to end it. Johnny Dallas, 21-year-old entrepreneur, first company in 14, sold it to Amazon. Um, youngest engineer to work at Amazon, congratulations. And now you're a freaking you. age and you're a third startup. <laughs> Rishi, I know we've known each other for years, going back to the big data world. You guys, you guys uh, encapsulate, I think, the innovation. You got, you got you know, experienced system thinkers and, and innovators and the young guns moving up and taking names and kicking ass. You've been doing platform engineering Hot Since topic. 14, when, when it was different kind of platform engineering, and that's the big story here, and I want to get your thoughts on immediately, is it's now mainstream, but when you were doing it, it was like you had to write your glue layer, write your cues, it was hardcore. Yeah, I, uh, I, I call it prehistoric platform engineering now. You know, uh, we built a first platform, I was you know, 15, 16 at, a, at our previous startup, pre-Kubernetes, uh, built everything from scratch, some Terraform, some, some Python, some Jenkins. It's, uh, it's That's awesome a heavy to see. lift, good on you. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun one. Um, but it, it worked, I mean, one infrastructure engineer is able to scale 15 developers, uh, every single AWS region, thousands of concurrent EC2 instances, and now it's awesome to see the category kind of catch up. Platform engineering is a term now, it exists. There's other people We've thinking about We've talked about, about it in almost every panel this I, week. I, I'm sure it's, it's been your, a lot of what, my conversations What is, what is the well. new company doing? Give it's us a quick great. milestone. I got 50,000 developers using your stuff. What are you guys doing right now? What's the core product? What's the service? Yeah, so uh, after building you know, that initial platform, what we've done with Zeet is we really want to bring the ideals of platform engineering to teams that can't quite afford to build it themselves. I think everybody loves the idea of the passes, you know, you've got Netlify, you've got Vercel, you've got all these really simple platform as a service companies that make developer experience very simple, but those don't really scale to actual enterprise companies. And so what we're doing with Zeet is that you have that developer experience on top of your own cloud, your own infrastructure, all in one, and then you can pick out pieces as you go to make it your own. Rishi, what's going on with you guys now? You got traction. I remember a couple of years ago, you were scratching this itch. AI comes around the corner, you're right there. Yeah, so, so for us it was pretty interesting because uh, right before the, I mean, the whole GPT conversation came, right? So we were, uh, we were doing end-to-end -end integration uh, and that, that whole testing piece using ephemeral environments. So there was only one missing piece that we were not generating test cases because it was, impossible to do that before uh, Gen AI came, right? It was it was almost like the element 43 in the periodic table, right? I mean, which was missing for over 100 years. And the moment it came, right, it was right uh, fit for us, right? So we, we jumped on it. Now we have the full support for all three models. By three models, I mean uh, the open AI, the GPT-4 version. Then we are working very closely with Google Cloud, right? And then uh, for the customers who are most paranoid, uh, we are curating the open source models. Uh, John, you remember? When, remember? You say, when you say paranoid, the ones that don't want to give away their information, is that what you're referring yes, to? Yes, I mean, something happened with a very large company. Uh, Samsung, that's Samsung. been well reported. <laughs> yeah. And so, there's stuff going on here, too, no one will admit it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know who they are. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so, so uh, a large company, they're, they're very paranoid about it, so they do, I mean, they're very eager, but they want the model to be on-prem, and they want it to be secure. So that's the piece we are working on. Right, so amazing traction there, right? So, but we are working on all three, right? So and just real quick, just it's end-to-end -end testing. 
using AI to, to as the core piece of it? Yes, so uh, test generation, test execution, all the way from uh, the user story all the way to the acceptance testing. Right, Great. So. That's awesome. We, we passed by it a little quick, but I want to make sure the audience gets to hear about this a little bit more. You mentioned starting businesses in 15, 16. How old were you at that point? Uh, so I, I think I joined my first startup when I was about 14 and came the director. About 14, just to yeah. repeat that for everyone. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then uh, entered high school, became the director of operations there and ran all the infrastructure. Landed on platform engineering and then our company got acquired when I was 17. So four years ago now, uh, it's been a little while, but yeah, so you, got, you got, the, got the cliff there, and then all the we're, cash. We're really into inspiring the next generation. We had Cassandra, who teaches the kids day on our show yesterday. I'm really curious, because I love to think of a, of a young, ambitious person sitting at home right now, maybe watching this. How did you get the confidence and decide what you were going to build at 14? Honestly, I think uh, the beautiful thing about software is it's all online and no one knows who you are. I don't know if you've seen that meme of... Uh, Nobody knows you're a dog on the internet? Exactly. <laughs> I got you, That Johnny. exact same thing applies yeah. to people. Uh, I, I knew very early that I love creating things, I love innovating, and I love helping people do more as well. Uh, I also knew that nobody would really respect me as a 14-year-old. It's not like I can go be a CEO quite like that, but I can write good code, and if I write good code, that can get be accomplished. So I started with development, did that for a little while, got to an age where people, I grew a beard, people, people listen to me now. And, uh, <laughs> Beauty helped in terms of the business the perception. I can, yeah, I can see that. I love that. That's actually, there's a line that I love. It's be so good they can't ignore you. And then as a, as a woman in tech, as a young person in tech, I'm sure we share certain experiences. Do you feel like everyone's respecting the hell out of you now? And rightfully so? Much more so. we got ways more to go. Uh, yeah. gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's better when you start making more money, then all the VCs will start money at you. And you 10 ways from Sunday. Or you don't need their money. Yeah, don't have to say no, that's no, the best part. Yeah, I was going to say, why, more, why, why right? even involve the VCs? Stand in line. Yeah, this, this guy's <laughs> sold the company at 17, I don't think we need any venture backing at this table. I think I, I'm awesome. my own harshest critic. I, I've, got, I've got plenty more to work on. I'm, I'm excited for it. It's going to be What's a What's the big challenge right now for you with your business right now? Give a little uh, color commentary on what you're going through right now. Where are you? What's some of the challenges and how are you facing them? Yeah, so uh, we started Zed about two years ago now, uh, really focused on, like I said earlier, developer experience. Make it very simple, make it very clean, make it very easy. Uh, what we've been doing more and more recently is focusing on the more ops side of, of DevOps, right? How do you give an infrastructure engineer really powerful controls to customize this experience and suit it to their setup, their devs, their environment? Because no company is the same. Everyone may look similar at a high level, but you get into the details, customization is really critical. So just last week, actually, we launched a new feature, Blueprints, um, which is the, the first big piece of this puzzle, which is allowing you to take any infrastructure as code module and import it into Z, make it a, a reusable piece of infrastructure. So if you've got, say, this is how I want to do S3 buckets at my company, bring that in as a blueprint, and now any dev can say, I need a new S3 bucket, and it will always use your template, your interface, and anybody, even an intern, can spin it up that way. And soon the AI, that'll so be AI enabled. So scalable, too. Exactly, I think that's really the, the core of like what this idea of platform engineering yeah. is, is, how do you scale expertise? Uh, we've had Agile, we've had DevOps, we've had all these kind of trends, but you really need software to do this, especially as we have more and more people becoming full stack developers, and entering distributed development. distributed all across the world, yeah. I mean, there's so many reasons for that. The complexity is expanding in so many different axes, you need just software. <laughs> exactly, there's definitely that Z axis going in the back too. Oh there's gosh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Multiple clouds, I think, is a, a really big trend that we're on, on top of, especially as all the AI stuff is picking up, uh, GPUs and GPU portals. Yeah. Let's get into that. problem, you, you guys, chat more. You guys are both doing AI, you're doing AI in your plan, you're young, AI is going to be a tailwind, I'm sure you're going to lean into it. You know, I'm sure that you will not run away from AI. I can tell by your look there. <laughs> so, guys, share with us your perspective, because we've been trying to frame the, where AI will land in this ecosystem. I mean, it's not clear directly. Obviously, security is one. Automation is not a foreign concept to infrastructure people. But it's infrastructure. You can't have hallucinations. But AI could be a game changer. So what, how do you look at AI in this market? A lot of plumbing, a lot of under the hood, a lot of log files, a lot of machine data. What's your vision of AI? How do you guys see it? impacting the good, bad, and the ugly. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you've hit it right, the log files. In fact, uh, one of uh, the secret ingredients we have uh, is to use uh, log files iteratively, right? I mean, if you think about it, when you, when you have test cases, it's not that they're going to pass first time, right? Maybe 80% test cases will pass first time, right? And that, then we analyze the logs using uh, Gen AI, and then it becomes 85%, 90%. Right, then slowly it gets to 100 percent. So it's a, like like debugging in software, right? Right. So it's not that software doesn't work first time, right? So it's the same thing here, right? Johnny, how is platform engineering going to evolve? Because 
I mean, you can connect the dots. You can see some things. It's not always clear. What's your what's Yeah, that's your great. Since you're the OG on the platform engineering <laughs> side, in, in, into the game before it was mainstream, what's next? Uh, it, it's interesting to see. I, I really do think multiple clouds is becoming increasingly important here. Uh, I mean, the GPU one is, is one thing here, but more and more we're having specialization of clouds. You have niche cloud providers coming out. You have privacy regulations coming up in Europe. You need to be spread across multiple different locations, and the orchestration of multiple clouds can't happen without a platform on top of that. And so I, I think that's Truth. a real tailwind there alongside AI. Uh, the, the whole AI world is very interesting. Uh, I, I, I think the uh, generative infrastructure is kind of one idea that people are very scared of right now. I, I, th I think it's kind of funny. I think we're kind of already doing it. I mean, we have Copilot and we have infrastructure as code. We already have lots of Terraform being generated by AI. It's already kind of happening out there, and I feel like people aren't quite seeing it that way, which is a bit well, surprising. Well, I just read on Stack Overflow, they banned ChatGPT. That's news. Um, oh, I didn't see that. They don't want any, any code pollution out there. So how do you deal with the good code versus the bad code? I mean, <laughs> aren't you worried that some bad code's going to come in? I think the evaluation loop is important. Uh, right now it's a lot of humans, but I think as we get more and more uh, ecosystem built up around AI tooling, we're going to have automated ways of testing these things. I don't know if you've seen any of the uh, auto GPT examples where you, know, you write some code, uh, you run the code, it breaks, you pass the error back into the AI, and it just iterates, iterates, iterates until it succeeds. I, uh, I imagine you guys are thinking about this a lot with uh, like your, your testing. You have the, the evaluation loop already in place. <laughs> yeah, by the way, we were the first enterprise sponsor of auto GPT. So mm. I'm a big fan of the project, and, and we are also planning to contribute there, right? So, yes, so, so absolutely. And, and as I said, the, so in fact, the same iterative approach which is using for coding uh, will also help them with the testing aspect. Yeah, so. What do you think we're going to be saying when we see you guys at KubeCon in Chicago in the fall and we're freezing there? Rishi, let's start with you. Well, um, I would hope that most of uh, the open source uh, part has just started, like we talked about uh, uh, auto JPD right here. So I think by that time, the, there will be a bunch of stable open source models, mm -hmm. right? Uh, John can attest to it 10 years back, almost every week there was a new Hadoop distribution coming out, <laughs> right? So now, what I'm hoping that every month at least, right, there will be a new LLM which is going to become open source and then all the training is going to happen on that. I think that's, that is the next biggest thing which is going to happen here. Right. Yes, you will have Microsoft, right? you will have Google, and you'll have all I of them. I think you're onto something there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Johnny, you have any thoughts? Yeah it's, yeah, it's definitely interesting to see more and more of these platforms coming out, right? Like, I think AI is so new, the ecosystem's there. I think from our side, the, the things that we're going to be talking about are going to be, have a couple cloud partnerships hoping to be able to talk about by then that are in the works right now. As we're well rooting as, for you. They're going to be exciting. Um, as well as, uh, you know, all the tools here, it's very interesting to see what we've really done with this Blueprints functionality we just came out with recently is more and more of these specific technologies. Like, uh, in the AI space, vector databases like Reviate, how does that get deployed? That's kind of still an unanswered question. How do you really scale that? Uh, we're going to have a lot more specific technologies to talk about. What do you guys think of KubeCon this year? Obviously the, the numbers are up, it's great, great numbers. Back to steady state for Europe, they oversubscribed by 50%. They expected 5,000, they got 10, 2,000 on the waiting list. 60% of attendees, first timers, so you got a lot of action. What do you think about the, the, the presentation? I know the, the papers went out in November, so not a lot of AI in the track, because you know, it, it kind of surged on us big time. Yeah, I mean, it's... What's your take? Go ahead. Uh, I'm happy to be one of those 60%. Uh, this is my first KubeCon. Uh, I've been to play with the family. Events. It's been great, uh, very welcoming. Yeah. Um, and yeah, very, very busy, 10,000 people. It's awesome. We had a couple of engineers who wanted to make it and couldn't quite get tickets, so uh, uh, I'm going to get them in next time. Um, but yeah, also first time in Amsterdam. Uh, haven't been here in a while. It's uh, also been an awesome week so far. What's what's been uh, what's been the highlight of Amsterdam for you? Uh, honestly, all the all the all the water and bikes. I, I love it. I'm always in a city. There's cars everywhere. I can like walk around. It's uh, the, the 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 city has been beautiful. <laughs> it really does have an energy. And and, and yes. having been at the last few KubeCons, I, I I'm not kidding when I say I'm getting energy off the floor. Everyone's so excited and helpful. I mean, the open source community is known for being a bit helpful, but I think one of the, and this is a vibe thing, one of the things that I've noticed between doing two events in North America versus coming here, is it's just so much more inclusive. Mm -hmm. It feels like a different sort of family. So I'm curious, I'll be curious to get your take when we're in Chicago and, and, see, what, and see what you're thinking. How's your time been in Amsterdam? What's been your favorite thing? English is not a problem. I mean, I, so, I mean, last time we were in Valencia where people had some challenges here, they're like, here, 
there's zero challenges uh, in speaking English. It's a great point on the language yes. barrier. Yes. Very so convenient. Think, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that, especially regarding KubeCon, right, day two, I would say most of the conferences have 30 to 70 percent strength. Here it was almost like 100 percent. Day yeah. three, no one ever is there. Yeah. Here, day three is what, 80, yeah. 90 percent? That's a really good, that's a really good point, Rishi. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was And curious. Amsterdam too, by the way. There's yeah. a lot of reason and, not to be here. Uh, yeah. So the reason that things don't start till 10.30, I think, around here, uh, <laughs> uh, this particular event, I think everyone's being a little bit generous, but it, it's, I mean, it's just been, I don't know. I feel like the city's very much welcomed us. I'm curious to see if the same thing happens in Paris next year. It should be great. Paris should be fun. I mean, who doesn't love Paris in the springtime? Can't help myself. It's been a great show. I got to tell you, I loved the show. I thought it was dynamic. We had great segments on the Cube. And I think it's more human this year. Because it feels totally more uh, inclusive. And no they've masks. always been inclusive. Well, and the uh, partnerships have had an opportunity to mature. Mm -hmm. I think I think we had a lot yeah. of things happening in silos for a few years there, and now everyone's starting to team up and work together and really start to build some. Like I said earlier, when you stuff. see data protection on the agenda, you know it's uh, it's, a, it's an enterprise grade show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. That's your benchmark, John. Well, I mean, like, I mean, I'm going to have to figure out what mine no, is. Most of the cutting edge shows. No, this is like a benchmark. It's more more of an observation. Like you know, the developer shows are they're hardcore developer power, you know, and you got coding, clinics, all kinds of deep dives. And sometimes some of these other enterprise topics don't get addressed on those core tech. Like so when you start to see things like data, data back and recovery, data protection, where security's in there, it's like, okay, it's hardening to be mm -hmm. enterprise grade. That's why I kind of like this platform re engineering repositioning, because platform engineering two years ago isn't what they're talking about right now. No. It's not, it's a completely different thing. Well, it's and, more and, mainstream IT. And to the point of like inclusiveness totally and, and dev conferences versus cloud conferences, we're talking so much about developer experience. I mean, Backstage is the, is the new CNCF project that everyone's talking about right now and a, a lot of focus on. It's really how do we take the stuff that we're th talking about here at KubeCon, bring it to developers and help them be a part of the conversation. And I well, think that's, that's, that's the inclusivity good, as well. That's a good question. You're the first guest to bring up some of the trending topics. What are some of the other ones? Backstage, the developers of Jazz, but what are some of the other projects that are in the hallways that are getting a lot of traction? What, what would you say? I mean, I think similarly, uh, it's not necessarily as new, but GitOps continues to be very interesting. The GitOps Con for the first time this year, it's a very similar premise. It's how do you give developers, the end users, the ability to control this stuff. Infrastructure as code, Git, these are the interfaces that developers naturally live in. Now we're yeah. pushing more and more of this to the edge while making sure that they don't have to deal with all the complexity of data management and the actual <laughs> infrastructure. Let's, uh, let's keep that over here and, and give them control. Well, you're a back-end guy, so the WebAssembly was a, is a actually hot mm -hmm. trend too. We had Wasm guys on. Rishi, what are you seeing as the hot developer? What's, what's the catnip for those developers? So developers, I would segregate them into uh, two categories, right? So most of the developers are eager to learn, right? Because, uh, I mean, there was a dream for people to become 10x developers, right? Now, you are either going to be 100x developer or, or you are going to become irrelevant. And okay. most of those are ready, most of the nice. developers are ready to become 100x developers, right? If you're not a 100x that. developer, you're irrelevant. You are irrelevant. It's a bold claim. Catnip. Yeah, for, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Dog bone, dog whistle. Are you going with the cat and dog in and yang? You referencing the dog t-shirts from yesterday? And yeah. I, I, see what you're, I see where you're going, John, don't What's worry. What's the best swag you've seen? <laughs> oh. That's a, that's a good I question. Think you we, question. We do a swag segment, so yeah, no, it's, it's, um, I'm curious. I'm curious if you agree with me. No, I'm kidding. I don't know if it quite counts as swag, but uh, I saw one of the usage-based platforms handing out dollars, uh, handing out free money, uh, <laughs> save costs enable us. Uh, that, that one was pretty good. I, that got me. <laughs> it's clever. It's free catchy. money. What about you? Well, I would say our swag, the tote bags, I mean, they, I mean, uh, they were like, more, we, we were out of them very soon, I mean, uh, I think day two itself, right? So everybody was carrying them, so, but I didn't get a chance to go and uh, check at other places. Well, we had a big debate. Do we like the Oculus Rift and the Legos that IBM had the higher, bigger price, but not as creative as no. your favorite. The replicated apron. The apron, mm. yes. The apron, and it's a nice one. It's a utility wow. apron for the barbecue or whatever. It's got little kit. leather straps. And yeah, a and a hangover kit. They even have a little, nice little eye mask for the vein amongst us. No, the whole thing, the whole thing was great. I got one last question for you guys as we wrap up this fabulous segment, and I'm going to start with you, Johnny. What would you say, because you've obviously been a, a bit of a gateway to people into this space, and I can imagine a lot of people look up to you. What would your advice be to someone who's just learning about Kubernetes, KubeCon, the open source community? What would you tell them? 
I mean, honestly, the space changes so fast. I would uh, very much focus on whatever is brand, brand new, right? Be at the cutting edge because that's going to be the heart of it all in a few months to a few years. So AI, WASM, platform engineering, backstage, these are the things to focus on because that's going to be all of the conversation for the next several years. I, WASM is very exciting. I mean, uh, even if we talk about the prehistoric platform that I built back in the day, we had to go to containers. That was a necessary step for us. We couldn't live in the supervisor There wasn't world. another option. And, and, and WASM just kind of improves that functionality. Like, we're, we're going to have more and more of these back-end runtimes that are accessible to developers and usable by infrastructure. And I, I think that's very interesting. We're going to have to start paying you because you pretty much summarized all the topics that we had here on theCUBE this week. <laughs> so I very much appreciate that. You've got to put us out of business. One second. <laughs> 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 I'm having a drink with Matt Butcher of Fermion after this too, so I'll let him know that you're excited about what they're doing. That's very exciting. Rishi, what about you? Uh, what was the question? Uh, question? <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on anymore. We're all, falling, <laughs> we're all falling off the rails. What would you say to someone who is just learning about the open source community, CNCF, KubeCon, what, what would you tell them? What would be your invitation or your advice to someone who's just getting ramped up? Yeah, so I would say that uh, I think uh, I mean, we have seen Kubernetes uh, evolving, and now it has almost uh, become uh, like an infrastructure play, right? That, I mean, the, uh, something which I found most exciting was that all of the new innovation, even in the Gen AI, they are assuming is going to happen on Kubernetes and containers, right? That, that's kind of assumed, right? So I think that's the biggest thing that... I mean, and that's do you think that's going to be real? Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. there it is. Well, Savannah, it's been great run this week. Rob Streche, we have... Yep. Great team. Yeah we've, yeah, we've had a really, really absolutely killer team. In fact, I want to give them all a shout out. We've got Yoop and Rob as my co-hosts. Noah, thank you very much. We've got Steve, we've got John, we've got Leonard, we've got Rihanna, and we've got Coney. None of this is possible without the fabulous production team that is seated over here to my right that you never get to see, but they're beautiful and they're brilliant, which is quite a bang. We are very lucky to be working with all of them. Rishi Johnny, thank you so much for joining us on the show. John Furrier, thanks for making the magic happen for yes, all of us. Great. And thank you for tuning in to our live coverage all week from Amsterdam, where we're at KubeCon Europe. My name is Savannah Peterson, and you are watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.